Uh, welcome to uh, Three Steps to Kayaking. My name is Hans Trupp, a longtime track pilot, sea kayaker, and director of development with Track Kayaks. I uh, want to welcome you to this program. It's part of a series we call Beyond the Boat. It includes Three Steps to Kayaking, Keys to Avoiding Deep Trouble, and Water Equals Wellness. Uh, in this episode the, of Beyond the Boat, it's Three Steps to Kayaking, where we focus on uh, the gear and the tools that you need to be successful kayaking, the skills development that are foundational to help you take your paddling to the next level, and sea personship, the art and science and a way of life that, uh, that we embrace as sea kayakers. So today's subject is the, the low brace. I'm happy to announce super exciting content, really foundational, and uh, uh, always room to improvement for all of us here. So I first want to start by introducing uh, a really special guest we have today. I first met Dan in, uh, in 2017 at the uh, Tracks 2020 project. We did a surf camp on the west coast, the wild wet west coast of British Columbia on Vancouver Island. And uh, uh, Dan Numbers came and really participated in uh, what we did was a um, taking uh, the Track 2.0 uh, production sample and we, uh, we ran it through its paces. We tried to break as many boats as we could and uh, figure out what needed to change, what needed we needed to adjust and improve on before we took this into, uh, into full production and market. And uh, Dan was a, was a great energy to have there uh, and uh, was really fantastic at helping to illustrate how all of us coming together from different parts of the world uh, were able to bring something unique to uh, to paddling, and uh, Dan was, uh, you know, interest and curiosity and learning from folks from New Zealand and from Brazil, how they did it, a little bit different, was, uh, I think, one of Dan's big takeaways that I remember from that, but um, Dan's been paddling for uh, since he was uh, nine years old. Uh, he's He's well over the middle hump now, I think, and uh, <laughs> I learned a lot of what he did through trial and error and through uh, mentorship. And uh, he's such a mechanically oriented fellow that he has an incredible capacity for breaking down processes for really a much greater efficiency. He's a certified ACA uh, instructor, uh, level two at that. Uh, there is a, um, a story that I'll share with you um, uh, that, uh, that includes Dan right after that expedition that we took, uh, Dan uh, actually w was performing a rescue in his hometown uh, with some of the skills that he had pulled out of the of the um, uh, of that particular surf camp. So I'm going to put that in the chat room. There's a link to one of our blog posts uh, called um, Odyssey, the 49th Parallel. So one way to get to know Dan a little bit more. Um, Dan is a, a, a track pilot uh, with all of us, and he's uh, instrumental in connecting us with uh, the community in the Pacific Northwest. He's a uh, a strong participating member of the paddling club Oops in the Portland area. Dan, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, so Dan, tell us where you're hailing from right now. Uh, I am hailing from Vancouver, Washington, which is basically uh, a suburb of Portland, Oregon, but with lower property taxes than a <laughs> sales tax to counterbalance it. Cool. Um, I'm seeing one of your neighbors uh, pop up. Uh, Stephen Bruckner is also part of Oops and in that in that yeah. general area as well. Good. So he's on the line. So um, uh, Dan, thanks of all. First of all, thanks for your uh, participation on this show and for your greater contribution to the community that you provide as a as a as a track pilot um, and a dedicated guide and educator in the in the art of of sea kayaking. Ah, no problem. Um, I love doing it. Cool. And so um, tell us, Dan, a little bit, um, uh, what is your next trip? What's your next lineup? What's in the lineup for you in terms of where you are in your paddling and, and what you're looking to accomplish in the next short term? Uh, the next short term, I'm just actually looking forward to getting back on the water. Um, I had a, uh, I have a reoccurring injury from, a, I ruptured some internal oblique muscles a couple of years ago. And once you do that, they're more prone to re-injury. And so I don't even know what I did to cause it, but I had a re-injury that kind of uh, kept me off the water. So I'm getting ready to get back. And then the whole COVID thing has like screwed everything up. Yeah. So uh, cool. my next thing is to uh, get the track assembled for more than just pictures or demonstrating it for somebody else and actually use it to get on the water and uh, get some endurance and some strength back up because I actually I haven't been in the on the water consistently since February. 
Yeah, I understand you are rehabbing from a past injury right now from uh, some advanced uh, Greenland rolling technique. Um, yeah. And it sounds like what's up next for you is just some paddle locally, building your strength back up and, um, and uh, really protecting yourself for uh, longevity in, in paddling as a result. Yeah. Cool. Um, so Dan, uh, we're going to talk today about, uh, about bracing, uh, specifically the low brace. Why is this important? Uh, low brace is really important because it keeps you from falling over. Um, that's <laughs> <laughs> number one. Yes. Yeah. Number one thing is it, and a lot of times people use it. Most of the time you see people use it when they're like, they're sitting there in their boat and they're, they're resting. Hang on a second. But, you know, people are in their boat and they're resting and they're like, oh, yeah, they're talking to somebody. And all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, you know, they, uh, you know, they'll slap that paddle down to get themselves back up again, keep themselves from falling over. But the other thing with the low brace is because you can use it as you rotate your body around. It's used basically a low brace is the same positioning you use as far as paddle position for a stern rudder. Cool. Um, so it's actually the starting point for things like uh, crank turns or in body boat blade, they call it the higgy turn. Um, so it's actually learning how to low brace. Is, it's also the finishing position for forward finishing Eskimo roll. Okay, so I guess two things I'm pulling from that is uh, one, it sounds like it's a it's a very effective corrective stroke, uh, essential yeah. for everybody having their toolkit. And the other, it sounds like you're pointing to, is it's a really foundational position toward other corrective strokes. Correct. Um, so a super great need to improve that. I get it. Thank you. Um, uh, so let me ask you this then, uh, Dan. What's the overall goal of this conversation we're going to have today about that uh, brace? Um, I'd like people to get at least a you know a book or like a you know a knowledge in their mind of how it's supposed to work yeah. um, something that they can take to the boat and when they're out paddling um, start practicing it putting it into practical application so that it gets ingrained in their muscle memory so that when they need it they don't have to think about it Okay, cool. So the, so the goal here really is to get the basic knowledge of the low brace and being able to integrate it into that forward stroke so that uh, paddlers can kind of train the, a practical application that will ingrain it into their muscle memory for yeah. kind of immediate application. You know, somebody in, uh, in, our, in our program that is uh, our, our virtual coaching program for sea kayaking, it's called the Skills Accelerator Program, was just commenting on this the other day. They were commenting that... Um, uh, they were doing a maneuver, they were surprised by something, and they flipped over suddenly. Uh, and the, the comment was, I didn't have time to think about the low brace. Um, it sounds like in your mind, this should be so ingrained in muscle memory that it's, uh, that it's, that it's reflexive. It, exactly. It's, it's a reflexive thing that, and the only way you're going to get to where it's a reflexive memory is to practice. Um, it's like if, I used to be a sponsored skateboarder when I was a little kid and I would practice, you know, doing my ollies, you know, as I was trying to, you know, get up over the curb and it got to the point where after a while I wouldn't even have to think about it. And if I was not paying attention, all of a sudden there's something in my way, I could just, you know, slap that thing out. I didn't have to, Oh, how do you ollie again? Um, Oh yeah, this and boom, you know, face plant. One, yeah. If you practice it when you don't need it, you'll have it when you do need it. Oh, great. That's a really great quotable. Um, love that one, Curtis. If uh, we can pop that in there as a quotable, that's rich. So, um, Dan, I'll just fill you in. We've got some great engaged paddlers on the, on the call today. We've got, uh, we've got Julie from Netherland, Colorado. Uh, we've got Robin from Apollo Beach, Florida. Um, we've got Garrett from San Diego. Herb's hailing in from Milwaukee. Um, cool. We've got Michael from Connecticut. We've got uh, Bob in, uh, in Illinois. Uh, we've got Mike, Michael Jackson from, uh, from Victoria, BC. We've got uh, Bob from Encinitas. We've got Francine from Kootenai Lake. Um, uh, we've got a really global community here. And um, 
We've got Florian, I think, is, uh, is hailing from, I'm guessing, from France today. So this is uh, really fantastic. So let me ask you this. When well, clear on the goal, then, um, what's the challenge with regard to the, uh, the, 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 the low brace? Challenge? I don't <clears throat> – what's the problem? Um, <clears throat> I'd say the main, the main thing is a lot of people use it as a corrective stroke. But I said it's also the beginning starting point for other more advanced strokes. Um, so I'd say really just learning what the position is. And um, one of the ways that I've done it is I don't know how many of you guys out there do uh, paddle in Greenland boats, but they're notoriously unstable. They're real, they're, they're a hunting kayak and they're, you would think a hunting kayak would be something you'd want to really be stable, but they are not stable at all. They're not quite K1 sprint kayak unstable, but they're pretty close at times. Yeah. Um, so one of, one of the things we do in a Greenland boat to stabilize is a static constantly. If we're not paddling forward, we're in a low brace while we're waiting, at, while we're not paddling. And if you actually look at K1 sprint kayakers, if they're sitting at the starting line, they're in a low brace almost the whole time, like taking that blade and in the water going like this and sculling to keep that boat upright before they start moving. I see. Got it. Okay. So really, it sounds like one of the problems is that all boats can feel unstable in certain conditions. Yeah. There, uh, there are no a... unstable kayaks. There are only unstable kayakers. <laughs> That's a great quotable. I'm going to put that one in the chat right now. Um, fantastic. You're right. So really, it sounds like the, uh, the problem is that all boats can feel unstable. Uh, and I, I can get how that can relate to feeling um, the paddlers can feel timid um, by the idea of tipping over. Um, and it can limit where and when you might actually be willing to paddle. And even worse, possibly put us at risk. Um, by um, exposing us to elements unnecessarily if we don't have the skills to stay upright um, in the conditions we've chosen to paddle in. Uh, right. Fantastic. So well, what's the opportunity here um, that uh, if somebody really kind of nails this low brace, integrates it into their muscle memory and has it as a, just a reflexive way on the water, um, either as a response to, uh, you know, tipping over or just as you've pointed out as a, as a way to remain sort of statically braced against what might come? Um, once they get to that point, you can go out and take on heavier challenges. Okay, um, cool. Like if you're practicing it in flat water and then you go out and you're running in, you know, 10 knot winds and, you know, two foot waves, you're going to use a little more and, you can actually throw yourselves into a position where you're like, you know, one, one thing I like doing with when I'm teaching the low brace is I'm also at the same time teaching people where to find the tipping point on their kayak. Like here's their, you know, their boat and you're finding that tipping point and then you get to that point where you got your secondary stability and then you get to that point where you're kind of like, oh, there's that point. And that's where you teach them to, you know, put that paddle on the water and do that, low, you know, little hip snap low brace. Well, I, I try to teach people to get there and practice that in flat water so that when you're out paddling and all of a sudden you get knocked over in, you know, light, you know, light to medium water, you can slap it down. And then when you go out in the ocean and you're in 10 foot swells and 20 knot winds, if you ever choose to do that, I think it's a blast myself. But you're doing your, you're paddling forward and you're throwing low braces, high braces, rudders, you're doing all of it. And it's all one cohesive thing. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. So it sounds like the opportunity really here is that is an effective low brace. One, it translates into more effective strokes. Um, it can yeah. really help the paddler feel more relaxed for increased stability as a result of, uh, of that confidence. Um, and it sounds like what you're saying is good form really translates into their uh, both longevity and comfort as a paddler, but it really opens up the areas and the, and the, the conditions they could actually paddle in with more fun and safety. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. So um, let's set the scene here with the, um, uh, with the low brace here. Uh, you've identified that by and large, the, the low brace is two things. It's, uh, it's not only a corrective stroke, but it's also um, 
uh, a reactive stroke. Yeah. Um, and so what I'd love to do is break that down into kind of some of the key elements of the way that you like to talk about it. Um, and what I'll include for folks that are on the call here in the chat room is just kind of a PDF that, uh, that is a, uh, 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 an instruction guide for a, uh, for a way to look at the low brace. People can follow along as they listen to your nuances a little bit, but let's break it down into its constituent parts. What's the first most important thing in the low brace, Dan? Um, the first most important part is to relax. Okay. Um, okay. I'm holding. I'm holding my little speaker here, so because it's harder to hear me here, and it's easier to hear me here. Um, okay. Good. Okay. The the main thing is to relax. A lot of times, people, because you're sitting in your boat, you should be sitting upright. Um, you should have your five points of contact. So because the thing is, folks, you wear your kayak, you don't sit in. That's really the, that's like a huge deal as you wear your boat. You should be able to throw that thing around. Um, the Inuit um, in Greenland consider it a, uh, they consider it like a, uh, oh, what, what's the word you're, I'm looking for? Um, they consider it like an appendage. They yeah, consider an it like an extra appendage on their body. Um, mm -hmm. That helps them get in the water. They don't look at it as a paddling craft as much as they look at it as a, uh, yeah, like just an extra appendage that you put on to, you know, help you. Like if you had a missing leg, you'd have that artificial leg. Well, this sure. is their artificial seal. Okay. So they can, they can swim like a seal or paddle like a seal and get out there to hunt the seal. Um, so, but you don't want it so constrictive that it chokes you off. You know, you, you got to be loose enough to do what you need to do, but it's got to be tight enough that you're not flopping around in it, too. Um, okay, so the first, the, 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 it sounds like the first point really relates around, uh, around uh, the body, body position, and that is a, a relaxed body uh, uh, and a body that's engaged with the five points of contact uh, yeah. so far as so what you're talking about. Um, what else do we want to focus on in terms of the setup and the correct body position? Um, okay, so the correct body position is, as with a good forward stroke, you're slightly, you know, you're not leaning back on the boat like, like this and pushing against your back. That back bend should be just kind of like a checkpoint that lets you know that you're sitting too far back. You should be a little bit, you know, forward, you know, like right, right about there, um, which allows you to do... When you do a, most of the time when you do a low brace, you're using the non-power face of your blade because you know how they spoon out and uh, the spoon side is your power face. This is your non-power face. Most of the time when you do one, you're using the non-power face of the blade. And so if you're relaxed and leaning forward, that allows you to get your elbows up perfect, you know, over the top of your blade and gives you more leverage. If you're out like this, you're trying to push down like this, but your energy is starting from here and it's got to rotate. Here, you can put your body weight down on it. Okay, cool. Because your, your elbows are like vertical over the top. If you're leaning back, you can't do that because your torso gets in the way. Okay, so the key points in terms of a correct body position is um, uh, uh, is a, a nice regal posture with a with a slight lean forward possibly to stay off the back band. Uh, mm -hmm. One is it looks like you're indicating to maintain uh, the points of contact, um, like we've talked about in previous episodes. So you're really connected right. with the boat as if it's an extension of your body, um, and it and it looks like you're also demonstrating to maintain the paddler's box. Uh, that we've yes. talked about in previous episodes, which is uh, keeping those elbows bent, uh, maintaining the right distance from your um, body, and uh, and setting yourself up for upper body rotation. Do I have that right? Right. Cool. Yeah, and with that, awesome. with that torso rotation, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they get to the end of the stroke, and they, if your body's straight, you get to the end, and you're pulling your elbows back like this. That's not good for your shoulders. If you rotate your body, face your work is what we say, but you always face your work. 
So if I'm at the end of my stroke, your, your, your arms are just there just to hold your blade. And it all comes from your torso. Well, that means if I'm turned like this, if I'm sitting in my boat, you know, and here's my boat going this way. If I'm turned like this, I can low brace here, I can low brace in the front, I can low brace in the middle. If I'm just facing forward, if I want to low brace back here, I've got to really tweak my arms out in an uncomfortable position to accomplish that. Right. And if I rotate my body, I've got all that area and I'm rotating my body instead of my arms. My arms pretty much stay pretty similar in the same spot. Um, so I'm doing, I'm getting a lot more effect for a lot less work. Awesome, I love that. So um, let's move on to, uh, to the next thing. Um, uh, and that is that you already identified the, the paddle part and, uh, and you spoke about the, um, the, the two faces of the paddle in, using a European paddle there is, right. um, is the power face side and non-power face side. And you also mentioned boat control. And it looks like we're talking a lot about edges here. So let's just call this second point uh, life on the edge. <laughs> um, let's talk wow. about that a little bit. Let's talk about that. Let's start with the... Um, uh, let's start with the boat control piece that you, you talked about first. Um, tell us about the boat control and how that lays into this in terms of uh, um, uh, working the edges, if you will, of the low brace. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, most boats, you have your primary stability, which is when you're upright, how does it feel? Most boats, most sea kayaks are a little unstable. Your secondary stability is where you lean your weight over. Um, if you notice on the track, if you're out paddling, it might feel a little unstable when you're just sitting in it, but put your weight on one butt cheek. And the boat goes right. It's really stable that way. And it's controlled up until you get to that tip point. If you can use your hips by, I know Paige talked about this earlier with the forward stroke um, in one of the previous ones, about kind of like, your hips and your torso, you should keep them loose and not like try to lock it all together. If you keep your hips loose, like you're doing the hula, you won't even need a low brace. If you start to tip over, you can move your hips and your uh, knee on that side that you're tipping over on, going over on my right side. If I take my knee and pull it up like that and kind of do a scoot out with my hip, that's going to bring my boat up before I even need the low brace. That means when the only time you'll need the low brace is when you hit, when you're just at that tipping point, and you're starting to move your body up and it's like, nope, I'm still going over it. Slap. There you are. You're back upright. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so it sounds like the, well, there's a lot, there's a lot of part of the, uh, of, uh, of stability um, is going to just come from uh, your knowledge of your boat. Uh, understanding yes. where your secondary, secondary stability edge is. Uh, and being able to to play with that and work with that yep. and uh, and use it in conjunction with any kind of upper body or paddle placement. Right, and that's the one thing when I when I'm just paddling and goofing off, you know, just going out for the day, um, or if I'm paddling with a group of people, I'm constantly paddle, paddle, paddle. Um, slide, slip over this way. Oh, let's lean my boat over. Oh, I'm starting to tip. And I do that, like I said, I do that when I don't need it so that when I do need it, I'll have it. I won't even have to think about it. Okay, cool. Well, let's, get, let's now go to the paddle part. Um, uh, and we're talking about life of the edge here. You identified that we're using basically the, uh, the non-power face side. Uh, tell us more about how we put that in now into, into play. Okay, well... Usually the time where I mostly use the low brace, like I said before, is either just kind of sitting in a static position and having my paddle in the water as a stability device. But if you notice, if you're at the front, you're at the front of your stroke and you try to dig in, if you, there you would use a high brace as opposed to a low brace because you're already in that high brace position. Here's your, because a high brace, let me differentiate between two. A high brace is the cat from the poster in the 70s saying, hang in there, baby. And a low yeah. brace is a monkey on a motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. okay, good. I love it. It's below my pectoral muscle. 
Um, old Ren and Stimpy reference for you people who used to watch that. But my elbows are mostly down. A high brace is a chin up. This is a push up. Okay. Got um, it. And because chin up, power face, push up, non power face. And then to throw that in, if you sometimes you can actually rotate your wrist up and then you can use the power face for a low brace, but it's not done with the Euro very often with the Greenland it is. Okay, cool. So um, the, the thing with the low brace is it's normally used from the stern to the midway point because like if I, you're at the end of a recovery stroke, you just finished your power stroke and you feel yourself going over, you're already in position, all you have to do is go level that weight off just under the surface of the water and you can go forward and it'll give you even more stability. But if you're at the front of your stroke, you'd have to pull and push down, it's too much work. Um, the other thing is if I'm paddling on this side, I'm, I'm on my left side and I find myself going over to my right, let's say a sea lion like bumps me over and I start to find myself tipping over to the right when my blade's in the water on the left, slap, I'm going over, it's right there, anywhere in that stroke, you can do that. You could do a high brace, but most of the time a low brace is going to be a little more effective in that, that kind of situation. And if you do low angle paddling where you mostly keep your blade at your chest level or below, which is real common with the Greenland paddle, that's where the low brace, if you're down here, but if you're high up like this on a high angle stroke, you've got more of a reach. And okay, that, cool. So, yeah, you got do a high it. So brace low brace at that point. Okay, so we're focusing on the low brace here, and yeah. so uh, what I'm what I'm getting is there's kind of two elements of a uh, um, is after you've really kind of set up your body position correctly, you really uh, there's two elements that you really want to get play with and be really familiar with. Um, one is the 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 awareness about the tipping point of your boat and understanding where yeah. your boat uh, is in terms of its primary stability versus secondary stability and where its tipping point is this is particularly pronounced on a hard shine boat like a like yeah a, like a track kayak or another skin on frame less so on uh on more round bottoms but uh but maintaining that as part of the technique and it sounds like the other part of the technique is really specifically uh having your paddle in a constant state of readiness where you can have the appropriate angle of incident to the water meaning that you've got your your right power face is there in an assumed position that's going to give you the most stability and leverage at a moment's notice Correct. Okay, fantastic. Good. Um, and so, a great job of taking my ADD and putting it into human terms. It's great. <laughs> so let's talk about that. So let's what's next. So uh, you know we've set ourselves up for success. We've got great body position. Uh, we've got uh, you know uh, we've trained and we're now reflexive with what to do with the paddle. Uh, what do we do after that sort of uh, brace part? After What's that brace part, you got to make sure that you're not going to tip over anymore before you take your paddle out of the water. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you'll need to, you know, you'll slap it down. But the other thing is level off your boat. Um, like, I can have my boat over, like, over vertical like this, and I can do a, basically a low brace skull. And there's actually, that's a Greenland roll. One of the things you do in competitive rolling is you're like this, and it's basically a Greenland roll, but you're like completely upside down and you slap down like this and bring your boat up. But you're trying in this, it's a corrective stroke or a recovery stroke, so you don't fall over. So once you slap down and you bring that boat up, and you're going to be bringing that boat up, not with just your paddle, but also with your hips and your knees, Okay. Well, then you got to make sure that you're safe to take your paddle out of the water to start your next stroke. So, and that's a, that's really a feel thing. If you're still feeling really tippy, you might want to keep that paddle in the water a little longer. If not, you can start your next stroke, but um, okay. don't okay, cool. try to recover from it too quickly. Um, I've seen people like slap one down. I've actually seen people slap down to do a, uh, 
a low brace and tip themselves over the other way. So don't overdo it, is the other thing. Okay, terrific. So it sounds really what you're saying is uh, in terms of the third step in this sequence is, uh, is really to recover to a position of control. And you're doing yeah. that um, by, by most importantly, uh, using the appropriate hip pressure that's achieved by what you described earlier as an elevation of the knee um, mm -hmm. uh, on your paddling side and having loose hips. Um, so it's not so much of a hip snap, but more of a, um, uh, just a, just a hip, a hip pressure, if you will. Hip Did I get pressure, that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. The, the idea of the hip snap is it's just kind of this jerky motion, but it needs to be just kind of long and fluid. And so instead of thinking like this thing, um, with, with your knee and your hip, and when you're rolling, if I'm, com let's say I'm completely upside down in my boat, let's say my head's down here. Oh, I got it. I got it. This is my body. My body is a Coke can, and here's my boat. Yeah. If I pull on my knee on one side, it brings everything, it brings the boat up like this. I'm already 20% of the way through a roll. Now, if I'm upright and I do that, and I'm 20% leaned over, oh, look it, I'm upright now. The, okay, old, the paddle it. is there just to give you some resistance so you can do that and not worry about losing, losing any, um, any momentum that you make because of like countering forces from the other side or from the water you're in. Okay, terrific. So we've talked about three. We've talked about three key things here. Um, one is uh, is really the the important of the setup and the body position. Uh, that's a that's a nice regal posture with a slight forward lean, a staying off your back band, and really being ready for uh, upper body rotation while maintaining the three points of contact. Um, the second key thing you've talked about is really uh, you know being on the edge uh, in terms of like awareness of boat control and knowing where the tipping points are uh, so that you can work with those, finding the additional stability that's inherent in the boat, but then also using the paddle with the appropriate face and angle of incident to, uh, to use that in conjunction with that edge and the, uh, what's available in your, um, in your three points of contact to really keep the boat upright. And then the third right. step is uh, to recover to a position of control through that hip pressure. Um, what else does somebody do to get additional stability then once they've kind of, you know, felt like they're starting to recover into a, into a position of control? Um, main thing, once again, stay relaxed. Um, if you're in really dicey water, um, I'm going to, you know, let me bring the, this over and bring my camera over. Here's a little trick that we Greenland people use. It works real good in the crack, too. Um, here. Okay. Say hi to my koi. They're all very nice. <laughs> awesome. We're going to the koi pond. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they're bashful because they're a little koi. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> if I take my blade, and let's say right here is the, the, ed, the um, gunnel of my boat. Okay. If I take my paddle, and notice how it's not on the surface. It's just slightly below. Maybe, you know, it's just barely you know two or three inches below at you know the farthest point if I just rest that and then rest the rest of the shaft on the deck of my kayak like let's say this is the deck of my kayak right here and I put a hand down on the gunnel and my other hand you know right in the center center line that boat it's an outrigger it's very stable I'm I'm like putting a lot of pressure on it and it's taken a while to come up but if I'm up here on the surface that just pops right up but look at if I put it down under the water so I can control um, rolling from either side from one side of my boat I see okay and you can also go underwater to create more lift if you need to if I'm on the surface and I do that, I'm splashing, but I'm really, you know, I'm good for the downward position, but it's like an airplane wing 
works better with airflow over both sides of an airplane wing. And a kayak paddle works better if there's water flow over both sides. You actually get more force if you've got water flowing over both sides. I get it. Okay, cool. So it sounds like um, it sounds like a couple of things that you can do for additional stability is to really extend that low brace out um, and uh, and be able to lean on that. It sounds like additionally keeping it under the water is going to give you uh, resistance to up and down pressure. And uh, yeah. it sounds like even a little sculling motion will stay very active. Now, one of the things Paige talked about in the forward stroke class was um was really uh, the stability that comes from a strong forward stroke. Now, yeah. how, do you, how do you link these two things together? Well, like I said before, a kayak paddle is like an airplane wing. Now, with an airplane wing, if the airplane is moving, you have flow, airflow going over that wing and it creates lift. Well, what happens if your plane has no forward motion? What kind of lift are you going to get out of that airplane wing? None. <laughs> But what kind of aircraft can stay aloft and maintain position when it's not moving forward? How does it create the airflow? Helicopter. It spins the blade, it, it, spins, it spins the wing around to create that flow. And that's what the skull stroke is in your kayak. So if your boat's not moving forward, you can do the skull stroke and have that pressure you need to keep your boat upright. And one thing yeah. I will do is as I'm doing my forward stroke and I'll go and I'll like add, you know, go into a brace stroke. Like let's say I'm covering, you know, breaking out of an eddy line and you know, I'm like on the side and it's like, there's a tide race I'm working my way into and I'm doing that eddy control, you know, I'll bust out and I'm in that high brace. Well, as soon as my boat starts to slow down and becomes the same speed as the water, I'm losing lift. I can't hang on that blade anymore. And I still need to keep my boat on edge to uh, get the turn radius that I want. Well, at that point, then you start doing that skull stroke and you're gonna maintain that lift on the blade that you need to keep yourself upright. And you can do that on a low brace or you can do it on a high brace and it's the same okay. sculling motion. Let me let me do this, Dana. You know, we've broken this down into kind of three key pieces. And then we've talked about extending that into additional stability here. I'd like to check in with folks right now uh, to, uh, to, to um, uh, speak into the chat here and tell us what's key for you about this. Uh, what are what is important parts of what Dana shared with you about this? And while you're doing that, I'm going to address a couple of questions here. Um, uh, Dan Julie asked uh, on a track. Uh, where are the primary and secondary stability edges? Um, and just to uh, help you explain this, Cole has a, um, also uploaded a picture of a kind of a long shot from the bow down the side. So you can imagine those corners. Perhaps you can describe this for Julie with that point of reference. Yeah, um, it's really going to depend on how you've got your rocker set up on a track. Good point. Um, the more rocker the more primary stability it's going to have. But if you have no rocker in your boat, and here's the, the gunnel, here's that edge where that hull and that deck meet. For me, and it's going to be different because everybody's got a different center of gravity and the different heights and weights and all that stuff. But for me, um, I can get that gunnel, I can get that just under the water and actually go in a little bit before I hit my tipping point. Um, yeah. If you're less stable of a paddler, it may not be there. It may be up a little more. Um, the more rocker you have, the uh, more you can lean over before that happens. If it's dead flat, um, it's, a it's a little less, but we're talking like, you know, maybe an inch, inch and a half at the most. Yeah. Um, Dan, Dan, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a great description, and it really speaks to what Dax is also saying in the chat, is that it's very much a felt experience. So, yeah. um, and so it's different for every boat and uh, possibly and for... And every person. So. And every person and possibly for every, uh, every kind of degree that your boat is loaded as well. So... Um, oh, that makes a huge bit of... If you're, if you're a fully loaded boat, if you're going out for, uh, 
even a weekend, you know, you've got like 50 or 60 pounds of junk in your boat to go camping overnight. Yeah. Um, it makes the boat more stable. It also makes it much slower to react to your input. Um, and you have to put a lot more weight over to get it on edge. Yeah. So I think this takes us back to that first, uh, to that first piece uh, that you pointed out in terms of the setup is to know your boat. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're asking the question, where's my primary and second stability um, on any particular boat, then it sounds like what you're really directing people to do is like, it's your job in terms of being able to brace is to know that <laughs> is to go out, yeah. find it, feel it, uh, fail uh, so that you know where it is, uh, get some immediate feedback on it, and then be able to use that information to uh, progress with your low brace for each and every boat. Yeah. And that I would emphasize, take your boat out. Even if you're in six inches of water right next to the shore, or at a pool session, you know, if there's any, any pool sessions that are open right now. I wish my koi pond was big enough to get my boat in. I totally be there now. <laughs> but just, to, you know, when you see when they're teaching people to roll, how they'll, like, have their hands on the edge of the pool. And they'll, like, be, like, working their edges and doing this kind of thing in the boat. Go out and do that with your clack. And do it, like, with no rocker, with max rocker. Find how your boat responds and then just paddle around close to shore and throw your boat over and do a low brace recovery, do a high brace recovery. And each time you feel more comfortable up that ante, throw it over a little more before you start your recovery and keep doing it until you hit your tipping point. And then you either roll back up or you empty the water out of your boat and you get back in it and you do it again and just make it a game. Have fun with it. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's terrific. So we've broken it down. Uh, we've talked about some things people can do kind of at a high level. Walk us through what does a well done proper brace look like in action? Okay, a well done proper brace. Um, it might be hard to show us, but to, if you, if you, if you kind of help us describe yeah. um, what it is, uh, what, are, what are the essence that we're really kind of looking to uh, to get here? I would say you feel yourself, you're, you're paddling along. Yeah, I'm paddling along. Oh, wait, I'm starting to go over this direction because a sea lion attacks the left side of my boat. <laughs> First thing I think is elbows up. Hip pressure. And I think of that before I think of the paddle. I'm thinking elbows up, hip pressure, and then blade down. So you're right over it, and then you start pushing, not slapping, but pushing down. And with this elbow, you can actually, and actually you should be using your torso this way. Now, notice I'm not going up and down with my elbows, but I'm rotating my body like that. And yeah. then I might need to move my arms up and down a little bit, but they should, like in a forward stroke, you don't want to pull and push with your arms. You want to kind of keep them there just to hold your paddle. Same thing. I'm in. Oh, I'm falling over. Down. Push. Hip pressure and all that. Push. And then my boat's upright. I feel stable. Recover. And you're off into your, your next stroke. Cool. Um, yeah, one of one of our one of our cohorts in the, uh, in, the in the skills accelerator program is uh, is uh, is just diving into this right now. So we're seeing lots of cool video on that. And one thing that uh, that we notice when we're teaching the the uh, the, uh, the low braces in a in a practicing environment, it can be really highly exaggerated for yeah. infinite, in, uh, for emphasis, and it can seem yeah. really exaggerated and kind of unnecessary when the conditions don't warrant it. But what I'm hearing you say really is that, uh, you know, a properly done brace, it really looks almost like kind of inaction and the movements deliberate and pretty subtle um, and mm -hmm. can be often unnoticed, especially if it's integrated right into sculling and or um, uh, and or a forward stroke. And uh, it sounds like that's that's really critical. So, you know, what I'd love to hear from people right now is, you know, my takeaway from that, uh, Dan, is you know, what I'm learning from you is that, you know, if you're not always 
if you're not uh, always like in a in another propulsion stroke or another corrective stroke, you're just in you're just by default in the low brace all the time. Yeah. Um, and so you're just always in some sort of propulsion or corrective stroke, um, and the low brace is sort of like the go-to if nothing has to happen uh, immediately. It's just like the standby mode. Yeah, it really is. It's it's the default default resting position in big water. Uh, or a really unstable boat. So let me ask a couple of questions here from the chat room. We've got Julie asking, so it sounds like she's asking, um, you know, hip pressure on the opposite side from the paddle in the water? Um, How would you describe that? No, it's on the same side that you're trying to correct. Like if I'm going over on my left to my right, so on this, I'm going over to my right, I put my hip pressure on the same side. That's I'm trying to counteract that movement over this way. The only way to do that is to right my lower body, my hips and my legs to counterbalance and make my body go up this way. Cool. Um, awesome. I, I'd love to hear from other folks on the, on the call here. Let us know what your take is, takeaways so far from this. Put them in the chat room. Um, we've got another question from Robin here that is, uh, so, Dan, is it more important that you push down strongly rather than slap hard if you feel like you need to brace? Tell us about that. Push push down as firm as you need. Um, like I said, you can put too much pressure and flip yourself over the other direction. Um, so it, it's, it's really balancing your hips your center of gravity by how far over your torso is, like if I'm way over here or way over here, it's that, your hip pressure um, and knee pull and your paddle in the water. But like I said, instead of a slap, a strong slap, it's a, a strong push down for the low brace. It's a strong push down like that. With if you, if as much as possible with your elbows down over the, the uh, shaft of your paddle um, so that you can use your body weight instead of trying to muscle it. Yeah, cool. So there's lots of variations of, uh, of this, uh, of this yep. brace and everyone kind of develops their own style. Um, what I'd like to do, we've kind of broken that down really well. I think we understand what a, what a, uh, a proper low brace looks like in action. Uh, I think we understand the fundamentals that we need to practice to bring this into muscle memory. Um, without, uh, without confusing anyone, Dan, let's just talk really at a super high level and a couple of bullet points about the high brace. You mentioned it, but when do we use that versus the low brace? Um, the high brace is normally used in a lot of times you'll do ed uh, eddy turns, uh, punching through surf, um, is a big one um, because if I'm coming up over a wave and that wave is coming towards me and my front of my boat lifts up and I'm like, all I can see is white because I'm like, that wave's breaking. I'm digging in over the top to get that green water on the other side of that. And immediately, as soon as I pull my boat up, I'm in a high brace to make sure I'm stable as that wave passes under me. Um, if I'm doing an eddy turn and I'm coming out and I start with a high brace because I want to uh, do a, a bow rudder, which is, you know, more advanced rope. But if I start on a bow rudder, it's going to start there and it's going to become a hanging high brace, which I'll probably be sculling on. Okay. Um, so, re so really, it sounds like a, when you use the high brace is mostly dictated by the body position uh, and its ease yeah. of access. Um, but it sounds like, and, and, and it sounds like the way you described it and pointed out previously, it's going to use the power face of the, of the paddle and it will versus the non-power face. Right. It will use the power face all the time. And the thing is, it's kind of tricky because a low brace, especially with the Greenland paddle, you will use either the non-power or the power phase. It, it really depends. The only difference between the two is power phase, non-power phase. That's the difference between okay, the cool. two. And you can do that, you know, I can do that down here, no problem. Up here, if I go like this on the power phase, but if I, yeah, that's not real comfortable to have your, have your blade up here like at eye level and you're trying to rotate down. That's that really strains your wrist, so you only want to use the power face on a hybrid. 
Okay, so really it sounds like because of the uh, potential risk injury of a high brace and, uh, um, and the only upside really is a little more power and sometimes more fluid based on you know, where you're coming from and where you're going with your yeah. current stroke is that what we really want to build skills and muscle memory for is the habit of a highly effective low brace. That's the most yes. foundational piece we need to establish. Yep. Okay, great. Awesome. So, you know, Dan, one thing that I noticed about you, and you've referenced this a couple of times, you're a Greenland paddler, you're a maker of, of uh, skin on frame boats, and, uh, and you custom make Greenland paddles uh, for people. What are some of the considerations with regard to uh, folks that are using a Greenland paddle with regard to um, the bracing technique? Um, yeah, hang on, let me grab my Greenland paddle. Um, the thing with the Greenland paddle is you notice it's a long skinny blade that you can get your fingers around the edge. So mine, you know, thumb, you know, my first thumb on my, you know, right there. And then your first finger joints, and it's comfortable. I could go more, but you don't want to, like, make it so big that it hurts to reach. So the thing with bracing, low braces and high braces with the Greenland paddle, is here's my normal position. I can extend that out all the way to the end of the blade. So you've got way more leverage than you do with the Euro, unless you want. Yeah. You can do extended strokes with the Euro blade, but it's not quite as easy. Um, the other thing is you've got better indexing because I've got that shoulder right there and the blade yeah. or the loom is oval. So I always know where my blade is at all times. And yeah. when you're in the water, this is about three and a quarter inches. That turns through the water like a blender a lot easier. So I can go in the water from this to that in the water, like if I'm doing a forward stroke and all of a sudden I find myself tipping, I can either go to a high brace or I can go to a low brace and it turns, it turns through the water a lot quicker than this big monster. Yeah, okay, so you have so a little more control over that. You can do corrective strokes underwater much faster with a Greenland blade than you can with a Euro blade. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, one of the things that uh, Mike Jackson is uh, uh, pointing out here is he uses his Greenland paddle all the time, and it sounds like the low brace is almost his resting position. So he's like, he's, yeah, he's supporting what you do. And by the way, Mike Jackson is going to be on the next uh, um, Keys to Avoiding Deep Trouble call and uh, really um, sharing with us um, more about Greenland paddling. Uh, technique. So um, uh, thanks a lot for that, Mike. We look forward to that broadcast. So um, Dan, this has been really fantastic. Uh, we've broken the, the, the low brace down into three simple steps, ways to think about it that um, uh, help us understand the setup and the correct body position, really understanding the edges and integrating the boat, our three points of contact, and the paddle together in that. Um, and then uh, how to kind of get into a recovery position for control and then add additional stability with either uh, sculling and extended low brace and or strong forward strokes. Um, and it sounds like really the key in your mind is to really refine this into your muscle memory that is totally reflexive and you know where the low brace is and you're using it all the time in, uh, in every condition as just yep. uh, anything that happens between strokes. What are some other kind of like a specific uh, final comments you would offer to folks here on this call? Um, practice as often as you can and have fun with it. Invent games. There's all sorts of games you can do. Um, um, yeah, don't make it a chore. Um, yeah. relax, relax and have fun with it. And when you find your when you when you find your limit, make sure you're doing it in an area where it's not going to kill you. Don't safe, don't yeah. take don't don't take too big of big of a bite, uh, too fast. I've seen some people get in some really nasty situations. Um, 
in that case, always go out with a friend when you're going out into something bigger than you used to and practicing those skills you've learned in easier water. Go out there with somebody that knows what they're doing in the bigger water. Uh, don't take a friend who is at the same level as you are. Yeah. Take My, somebody, Scotty... yeah. Go ahead. Take somebody who's a lower level so you can teach them or take somebody who's a higher level so you can learn from them. Cool. I love that. I love what you're bringing into this. Uh, you know, well, one thing that inspires us uh, to actually have these calls is that uh, that apprenticeship and mentorship that was so important when you and I started paddling. Uh, yep. That it came over time through trial and error and through you know somebody's taking us under our, our wing there. Michael Jackson's got a great comment um, that supports what you're saying. That basically, uh, you know. Bracing is just an active thing that you're doing all the time. Um, and he talks about uh, with his Greenland paddle using sculling as a, uh, as, a, as a movement just to make that low brace even stronger. Yeah, all the time. Uh, yeah. I, I throw skull strokes and low brace because basically a stern rudder is a form of a low brace using depending on which direction you're steering you're either using the power face or the non-power face a forward stroke a forward a bow rudder is a high brace that is using either the power face or the non-power face depending on which way you're turning a side skull is a high brace um got it okay Perfect. it's all a form of bracing and the thing is the difference is okay forward Okay, now that I'm off to the side, stern rudder, cross bow rudder, and if I keep that stern, that stern blade in the water, bow rudder. It's all, everything has to do with this, it's just that it's over on the side, and I try to teach it as one whole holistic integrated thing instead of separate strokes. You should be able to flow from one into the other into the other and throw low brace, high brace in there while you're paddling. Like if I'm, you know. So, so Dan, it sounds like your, your, your big calls to action are is to get out and paddle, play games or exercises that really require bracing and corrective strokes, and to really do the practice your transitions, do forward and low brace recoveries back and forth and back and forth and really get that, uh, get that, that. Um, I'll add one more thing here is um, I'm going to add this document once again in the chat room, just a PDF on the low brace that's broken down in this part to help you a reminder from you. Um, Dan numbers, this has been really fantastic. Before we open this up to, uh, to comments uh, and, uh, and uh, our, our usual hangout here, just want to get um, get from you a sense of how do people follow you and uh, and keep track of what's going on for in Dan's world? Um, probably Instagram is an easy one. Uh, Dan numbers. Cool. Um, I'll put I'll put that in the chat room for everyone. All yep. um, I have more kayaking stuff on there, although mostly it's been uh, cigars because I'm kind of a cigar snob. But when I get out paddling more, there's going to be more boating stuff on there. Um, the other thing is through email, uh, all lowercase Dan numbers at gmail.com. If you have any questions or uh, live in the area and you want to either go out paddling or, you know, maybe get a lesson, I could teach you the low brace one on one. It would be really great. <laughs> Awesome. There's nothing better than uh, than that than that one-on-one -on -one mentorship and uh, and, uh, and 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 guidance and coaching. We appreciate that, Dan. Um, so this is uh, this is really fantastic. One other addition that Mike Jackson has is, um, you know, if you practice practice, you can add paddle extension to your low brace with a Greenland paddle. Yep. Um, but you know, the overall goal collectively is you need to practice and make it a quick, fluid, and instinctive response uh, as a corrective stroke. Um, so that's really that's 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 really a fantastic part. Now, um, I want to give folks if you're if you're here today, it's because you've signed up. One thing we've just started doing is we've started putting these episodes into a library that you can access for review. So I'm going to put that link in the chat box right now. Uh, you can see the three steps to kayaking episodes. Uh, take a look at those. If you have any questions, we welcome your comments. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to these, I encourage you to subscribe not only to the Three Steps to Kayaking, but also to 
the Track Foundations program where we can review lots of these fundamental skills. I'm gonna put a link to the Track Foundations program. And with Track Foundations, you can do it yourself or you can do it together. We do have a, uh, a Skills Accelerator coaching program uh, that, I'll let, um, that I will let Cole speak to in just a minute because he's our, he's our head guide on that one. So let's put, uh, let's put that link in there to see the Skills Accelerator program. And um, uh, that is, um, uh, I think that's a, that's a wrap for this then uh, with regard to um, that dance. So what I'd love to do before we bring Cole in to speak to the Skills Accelerator program, just open this up for questions. I, reckon, I recommend people can either just uh, put your questions or comments in the chat box. We'd love to learn what your takeaways were or the points that resonated with you most. What are you going to do um, uh, with your paddling as a result of this conversation? And uh, if you want to just unmute to do that, now's a good time to unmute and you can ask Dan uh, uh, questions uh, that are top of mind for you. While that's happening, I just wanted to uh, do a couple of shout outs here. We got, uh, we got a number of track pilots on the line here. Of course, we've got Mike Jackson. Uh, we've got uh, Michael Stern. We've got Cole. Um, we've got um, uh, big track fans out there like Francine on the line. Um, uh, big shout out to Dax, uh, who has uh, been, was responsible for putting together some of these assets and branding. So Dax, Justin, yeah, thanks, for, uh, thanks for putting all that together and for your exceptional photography at events like uh, the upcoming uh, Pacific Rim Surf Camp. I'm not seeing any questions come up here. Nobody's unmuting. We did so, such um, a good job that we left them speechless, or we did such a bad job that we left them speechless. Dan, mm. yeah, awesome. There's one thing I want to check in with you, Dan, about what's your favorite part? Like, what's uh, what inspires you to uh, to be a coach and a guide with Sea Kayaking? Um, the main thing is when I started paddling when I was nine and the way I learned was by doing everything wrong to the point where it hurt and figuring out, cause I'm kind of mechanically minded. So I'm like, okay, that hurts. How can I do this and not hurt? And by the time I had, you know, by the time I, you know, got older and, you know, knew what I was doing. And then I got my certification as a coach you know, I started taking ACA classes for, uh, you know, the pre, the stuff leading up to getting your certification. I was like, oh, I learned a bunch of stuff. And I thought it would be great for me to be able to pass that knowledge on to other people so they don't have to go through the same years of torturing their body <laughs> to get to that point. It's like, if you can take six months of classes or even, you know, even six classes and learn in six classes, what it took me to learn in six years, take the six freaking classes. And I want everybody to get as good as they can, as quick as they can, um, just so they don't tear themselves up in the process. Yeah, terrific. Thanks to that. Dan, thank you so much for that. Now, I want to thank you for your time today and for your expertise and all uh, your contributions welcome. to make to the track community. Um, we're getting some great comments here uh, from everyone. It sounds like there's some really great learning here. And... Um, uh, but uh, this has been really valuable and it's going to continue to be valuable.